Yeah, okay. We need to poo, blood and honey. I watched this last night. Uh, it is not good. So, the entire concept of this film came about because it'd be right for the Winnie the Pooh books by A.A. Uh, a. Mill. Mill wrote the Winnie the Pooh books and they have now entered the public domain because of the US laws, which mean that after a hundred years of the original intellectual property being patented, then it can now be in the public domain so anyone can use the concept however they please, which is why this film came out by this Swedish production company directed by a guy called Race Freak Waterfield, who has done things like The Killing Tree and Fire Nado and whatever the Area 51 incident is. But it seems like he's kind of hitched his horse to this uh, public domain wagon because the next two films that he has that he has up and coming is Winnie the Blood and Honey 2, which they tease at the end of this film, and Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare. So they're doing that too. This production company, what is this production company called? Oh no, no, it's not, it's Jagged Edge. Because if you look at this, they are the ones who are doing Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, Curse of Humpty Dumpty, Dinosaur Hotel, Jack Frost, Croc, Dinosaur Hotel 2, Easter Bunny Masco, Winnie the Pooh 2, Peter Pan, came from below. So this production company seems to be the one that's really trying to get the public domain moolah that they've got going on here. Similarly to the Asylum films, which also they're the ones that did like Sharknado, um, Shark to Puss, all of those like terrible, terrible schlocky B movies. Shark they take the film. Like the These terrible low budget films, but they'll take films that are coming out in the future. Big, big budget popular films that are going to come out in the future. And instead, instead they make films that sound similar to it with incredibly low budgets. They make films that look very similar to it. So uh, see, they'll have like Planet Dune, Jungle Run. Uh, final level it's just the asylum uh, swim ape versus monster battle star wars and that you see they just get actors that just kind of look like the real movie's character jurassic domination transmorphers alien versus hunter the day the earth stopped titanic 2 <laughs> air collision nazis at the center of the earth so these are just all terrible low budget films that they make for like no money that they try and just trick people into thinking that it is the real movie instead i don't know how they do that but they usually try and release it like around the same time usually like a week or two before the real movie comes out so i assume they're trying to like just trick people i don't know how it's that profitable a business model but clearly they do something and winnie the pooh blood and honey is very much living in that world. The very basic original premise of it is that because Christopher Robin has headed off to college and has abandoned his friends Pooh, Piglet and Owl and Rabbit turn feral, end up eating Eeyore because they're starved for food and then decide, decide to take a vow of silence and then just kill and destroy any human that they happen to come across. So then after this first little like fun like animated bit where it's drawn in this like almost Tim Burton-y scratchy fable like uh, drawing style it's like a little bit offsetting with the old British man narrating it that kind of looks this old spooky feel to it that was kind of fun after that it just turns into the worst kind of slash movie that you'll watch for free on Tubi with 30 minutes of ad cut between a 70 minute film that's the level of quality that Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey brings to the table. Uh, none of the gore is, none of the gore is like good, like the actual kills in it aren't that interesting. The special effects themselves are done pretty well, and I'd say it's shot actually pretty well. Like whoever the cinematographer was did way too good of a job considering Vince Knight. Yeah, he tried, and I've got to say, it doesn't feel like anyone else did because this movie is terrible, and I think the biggest issue just comes down to the writing and the acting. But it's it's a cheap horror movie, I can't be that mad at the actors. The writers I can be mad at because this 
film is written like fuck garbage. You can be as good of an actor as you want. If you have to say the lines that some of these actors are forced to say, you're not really going to be giving them Shakespeare. Like, it is the most like, oh my god, he's dead? What happened to him? It looks like he was stabbed. Oh no, what do we do? Where is our stuff? Like, it's the most rote kind of horror movie cliched writing. So I really don't blame the actors too much for it as much as I blame just the director who there to direct the actors and the writers that are meant to, you know, give a compelling story. Like what they could have done, I was saying last night, a clever way to do this. It's not gonna, it's not an easy fix, but I mean, you know, that's how you make something that's not shit. It's a fun way to do this would have been like, take the original Winnie the Pooh stories, you know, Pooh trying to, Pooh getting stuck in the tree or going to rabbits for tea and like the blustery day, like, Take those kind of things and then put the creepy horror twist on top of that to make it clever, make it feel like Winnie the Pooh instead of it just referencing the names and the characters but not really having anything to actually do with it being anything about Winnie the Pooh. At the end of the day, like, there's a way this could have been interesting, there's a way it could have been kind of clever, but they definitely just opted for the get it out as quickly as fucking possible, let's make some money, let's make some blood. And this is what we got. So it's not good. The concept itself is fun. We watched in the theater with a group of people that are very much on that wavelength. So in that environment, I had a good time. But you know, know yourself. If you like the worst, cheesiest kind of horror movie slasher movies that are not scary, that don't really have anything clever about them, but you just love watching the cheese of it all then this will work for you. If not, don't watch this. This is really, really, really bad. And what did I say? I'd give it a cause for out of 10. Because the pure concept of it, I think, gets it far enough. It looks much better than it has any right to, but everything other than that is really bad. It's really good movie.